Yeah, I even got a commercial. So it's uh, T minus about 45 minutes uh, until Phil Schiller comes on and opens Macworld with a keynote speech for Apple. We went to talk to uh, the people in the queue last night. There were three kids uh, at the front of the queue. This morning, they remain the only people in the queue. It's, uh, it's not as packed as usual. In here, we're waiting to get in the main hall. Uh, Apple seem to be doing their best to kind of create a media scrum, I think. Um, but give it a few minutes, we'll go inside and see what they've got to say. And, you know, while it might be good for the organizers, have a couple of years ago, but it's really slow and it has a few things done. It doesn't make sense. The atmosphere inside was uh, inside the keynote was pretty subdued. Really, people started off with a bit of excitement, like they were, you know, they were really going to go for it, even though Jobs wasn't here. Uh, as the announcements went on and on and on, uh, things got a bit quieter. So the first thing we saw was software, uh, an update to iWork, which is the kind of Microsoft Office for Apple users, and iLife, which is the suite of uh, kind of consumer applications that they have. So we saw an update to iMovie, which got a big update last year and, uh, and everyone was tearing their hair out because they thought it was rubbish. Uh, we also saw GarageBand, where you can now get lessons from the likes of Sting on how to play famous songs. I'm Sting and I'm here to teach you my song. Then we moved on to the hardware, which was very limited this time. We saw a new 17-inch MacBook Pro, which had been pretty widely predicted, especially as the 13 and 15-inch ones came out a few months ago, and everyone was wondering where the 17-inch one was. But the biggest change that we saw today was probably the announcement that uh, in a few months' time, iTunes is going to be completely free of copyright protection. So we've already seen a move in this direction by Apple. They, they were offering iTunes Plus, which allows you to get a better version of the song you wanted, and you can use it uh, away from your iPod. You can switch it between different computers. If you remember back in 2003, we started iTunes saying we wanted to give customers a legal way to purchase music digitally over the internet. And it's so, it's so great to see how many people agree with us and want to take part in this legal way to purchase music. Now they've made a deal with all of the major record labels to spread that across the whole of the iTunes catalog, which is, you know, not an insignificant 10 million songs. Over the last six years, we've had one pricing model for all songs, 99 cents. And the music companies have told us they want more flexibility. So starting in April, we're going to give them more flexibility because we're going to create three pricing tiers. It'll still be 99 cents. It'll also be a pricing tier at 69 cents. And at a dollar 29. We saw the record labels started to outmaneuver Apple by offering DRM free tracks to the likes of Amazon. Um, now Apple have kind of maybe they've capitulated, maybe they've come to an agreement, but they've said, okay, you can have flexible pricing if we can have DRM free. So the other big question really is, uh, how did Phil Schiller do? Did we see any sign of Steve Jobs at all? Uh, although I imagined maybe we'd see a surprise appearance, I have to give myself no Steves out of five for that one. Well, with no more fanfare, it's my honor to introduce to you Mr. Tony Bennett. Because uh, we didn't see hide or hair of Steve Jobs, but Phil Schiller did, and admiral job on stage with effectively what was a pretty lacklustre bunch of announcements. Golden sun. 